Hey there, how's it going? I want to start off by saying the last devlog, and the first one I made back in September actually, just blew up all of a sudden. These devlogs has normally struggled to get a thousand views, which is already a lot of people in my mind. But devlog 20 hit that in the first two hours, which is just insane. As of writing this, in the first five days, my views are up 366%. I don't know how to handle this. <laughs> so I just want to say a very warm welcome to everybody that's new, and thank you so much for watching. The amount of people checking out this project right now is amazing and utterly terrifying at the same time. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the week. I've been doing a lot of game dev this week, but not really on Monkeys with Guns. This is the week I chose to participate in the Ultimate Game Jam, which is a game jam I'm doing with a bunch of other YouTubers I mentioned in the last video. I'm still actually in the middle of it right now. I just had to stop to make this video because Sunday is the day when I make my devlogs, and it's the only day I really have. So I'm going to put this together and then get back to it. But I do have to say that doing this game jam has really helped re-energize me. I've been having a lot of fun working on the game and doing art again. I think I finally pulled myself out of the funk that I've been talking about being in for the last few videos. Of course, the energy has not been directed at the monkeys much yet, but oh boy am I excited to get back to it after the jam. So again, because of the jam, I haven't spent much time on Monkeys with Guns this week, but I did get to do some bug fixing. Nothing to do with the freezing bug, unfortunately, as of yet, and that's mostly because I just can't recreate it. I'm sure I'll find it eventually, but the first steps will be figuring out how to trigger it, and so far it's just been really elusive. But the bug hunt was not for nothing. I had two members on my Discord server let me know of an issue with the player select screen. Turns out, if you're on the player select screen and hit escape to go back to the title screen, then go back to the player select screen, sometimes the monkey select boxes are just missing. This, like a lot of bugs that I create, is because I added a feature for quality of life and I didn't really think of all the ways that it's used. So to break it down, I track the player's state through the game in a few ways. Enter, which means the player is not active, they can press a button to enter the game. The next is skin, which means the player is in the skin select phase seen here. Ready means that the players have selected the skin and they need to pick a level. And finally set, which means the players have made all the selections they need to make and are ready to enter the game. So the small quality of life tweak that I made, I set up the player select screen so that when returning to it from the stats screen after a match, if the player was already playing, then the layout would load and automatically put the player into the skin phase, removing a button input that they would need to enter the game again. And it really works quite well. At the end of the stats screen, if a player is active, then their state is set to skin when returning back to the player select screen. Otherwise, it was still set to enter and everything works out as intended. The issue here is I don't have the same checks happening when going from the title screen to the player select screen. Here's an example. Say the player state is ready or set on the player select screen. Then you hit the escape key to go back to the title screen. Now you hit play to go back into the player select screen. The trigger to create the monkey boxes now has no idea what to do. All it knows is that if the player state is enter, then it needs to set up a new box that the player can enter the game with. Or, if the state is skin, then it needs to set up a new active player and automatically go into the skin state. But because we backed out originally, we now have players set in the ready or set state. And the player select screen just doesn't know how to handle those on creation. If we set it to those states later, it knows what to do. But when creating the actual box, it doesn't have any information to do that. Games are obedient and do exactly what you tell them. I didn't tell the game to do anything with those states, so it just doesn't. Luckily for me, this was a pretty easy fix. I do still like the quality of life part of returning from the stats screen and having everything already loaded in if you were in the game, but I don't feel that that's as necessary when returning from the title screen to the player select screen. So the easy fix was to set all players to enter when leaving the title screen. That way, when you hit play and the player select screen pops up, everyone is set to being inactive and you can just enter as normal. And I think this works, I don't see a lot of need to remember the player's state when the game is backed out to the title screen. So it's all working now, and the biggest irony of it all is adding the ability to hit escape and go back to the title screen was another quality of life addition. The way I originally had it to go back to the title screen, all players would need to back out of the player select into the enter state, and have player 1 hit back to go back to the title screen. This meant that when going back to the title screen, all players were already in the enter state. It was suggested to me that I made escape back out as well, which seemed like a great idea and made a lot of sense. So I went in and made it do that. But I never updated the player's states when you hit escape, which is where the whole issue begins. It just goes to show that there's always something that will be overlooked, and that's the beauty of playtesting. So a huge thank you to Sid Makes Games and SSG Leader Psychic Chicken on my Discord for bringing this to my attention. When demoing and playing, I've never really used the escape key, so who knows how long it would have been before I caught it myself, if at all. That's all I have for this week. I'm going to edit this video and get back to the jam and hopefully get that finished up in time. 
A quick side note, I was asked to take part in a collaborative YouTube video by Fairly. I hope I pronounced your name right, I've never actually heard you say it, to celebrate him hitting a thousand subs. The video is out, so congrats to him, and if you want to hear tips from 10 devs, including myself, the link is in the description and I will try to remember the card thingy as well. Once again, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you from the bottom of my heart for watching and commenting. I started this series because I really enjoyed watching other devs' experience, and I hope mine would be interesting as well. You are all awesome and I appreciate all the support so much. If you want to get in touch with me, you can leave a comment below, message me on Twitter, or join the Discord with some other awesome people. I read every comment and try to respond. I've been getting a lot more lately, so if I'm slow to respond, I apologize. I do my best to get to everyone. You can get the public beta for Monkeys with Guns, as well as any of my other games at vimlark.itch.io. That includes the Game Jam game that I'm making in a day or so. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.